Hey, welcome back. You're watching Impossible Color. And today I'm going to show you how to perfect your colors in Adobe Photoshop. Most of this tutorial is going to take place in Photoshop, but I did do a little bit of prep work in Adobe Camera Raw. You can do the same kind of work in any Camera Raw editor, such as Lightroom. And I highly recommend working with raw images if you don't already. The tutorial is fine for JPEG, but it just gives you a lot more flexibility. This is the original image straight out of camera. And here are the changes that I made in Adobe Camera Raw. So if we go to the first tab here, the basic, you can see all the different exposure settings. And you can see that I brought the highlights down. We just had a little bit of areas being blown out. And there was some really dark areas that I lightened up with the shadows and a few little tweaks here and there. Nothing too much. And then if you go to the HSL tab under luminance, so this is the brightness or the darkness of each color channel. And you can see that I made some significant changes here. The oranges I brought up. And the reason being is that I really wanted some strong contrast in the patchwork of the giraffe here. And same thing for the yellow. And the greens, I wanted the background to really just get a lot darker so that the subject could pop out and have some separation there. Same thing for the aquas, that we had little patches in the grass here. And that's pretty much most of the major changes I think I did a little bit of uh, correction on the chromatic aberration in here, but uh, nothing else too much on the colors. So after that, we brought it into Photoshop. I highly recommend that you get all of your tones sorted out before you start adjusting colors. If you try to do them after the colors, the colors can change dramatically and you may not like the results. So I did most of these alterations ahead of time to help speed up this tutorial, but have no fear. I'm going to explain everything that I did. So the first thing was simply some touch ups. So if you watch some of my other tutorials, you can see how to remove distracting elements in the background. You can see that I removed the fence, some patches in the grass, little spots over here. I added some detail to the tail and created some separation between the legs. So on to the main portion of this tutorial, how to get those colors nailed down. Well, if you've watched some of my other tutorials, you'll see that I really like to use adjustment layers. You click this little circle that's cut in half down here. It drops down and shows you a lot of different things that you can alter. Uh, on your layer or layers and an awful lot of them affect the colors you've probably seen me work with curves before and levels and hue and saturation but today we're going to focus on two of them selective color and color balance some of my other tutorials I'm creating a very stylistic effect where I'm intentionally making those colors stand out and look unique but for this particular image, I want to perfect the colors, but not create a new style. I just want the colors to look natural, but pop and look really striking. So the first thing I'll do is selective color. And if I turn on those changes, you can see that everything still looks the natural colors that you'd expect in a scene like this, but they just pop so much more. So how did I do that? Well, if we click on this little icon here, you can alter your adjustment layer at any time. And at the bottom, make sure you have absolute selected. You could uh, select relative, but colors are going to change relative to one another. And I just like to work with absolute in order to perfect it. So the first thing that I want to do is go to the top and the colors section. And basically, I want to go through each one of these colors every single one of them unless there's something in your image that you know is absolutely not there and refine them all 
You can see at the bottom that we also have whites, neutrals, and blacks. You'll be doing um, minor changes to these, but I would guess a lot of that had been worked out ahead of time, but we're still going to go through and perfect them. So under reds, you can see that I brought down the cyan in the reds. So the net effect of that, let's go back to zero. And you can see that it warms up the subject here. And the magentas, if I brought that back down to zero, somewhere around there, you can see that it gives kind of a strange pinky look there because, because of what we did with the reds. So we're also going to bring that one down and just kind of give it a more orange look. And you can see the yellows brought that up a little bit. Kind of warm, some, warm up some of that area there. And basically, you're just going to work through all of these. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. Um, but I do want to draw your attention to the greens and the black section. So for every color, you can adjust CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And on the black, you can see that I raised it quite a bit. And basically, it's black is representing the darkness of that particular color channel. So the greens are becoming a lot darker when I move that over. Why is that a good thing? Well, I felt for this image that making the greens a lot darker would help the subject pop forward and just throw the background further into the background, create a really nice separation there. Now let's go down to the whites. By adding a little bit of blue or taking away yellow, it really helps those legs pop because it creates a much cooler hue compared to the warmth of the other areas. And that contrast makes it really appealing. Now, if you go to the neutrals, I generally don't change much in the neutral area here. You can see the cyans I brought down a little bit, but uh, I find that if you've worked your way through all the other colors, there shouldn't be a lot of changes in the neutrals. For the blacks, you can see that I added some magenta and what are the darkest areas in the image here? So a bit in the eyes, but mostly the patches here, a bit of the tail, maybe some areas in the grass. And the dominant color in this whole image is the green. So the opposite of green is purple on the color wheel. So by adding a little bit of magenta, I'm kind of it's kind of the equivalent of adding some purple to the darks and it creates a really nice relationship with the grass. Now you don't want to go extreme like this, but just a little subtle nod to that creates a really appealing effect for the eyes. So after all that's uh, said and done for the selective color, you made your way through all of them. Then you're just going to go down and create another adjustment layer. For color balance. Now color balance is kind of a more global uh, alteration of your colors based on the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So most of your colors should be worked out um, in the selective color, but this just gives an extra layer of refinement when you really want to perfect those colors. So again, work your way from top to bottom. So for the shadows, you can see that I added more magenta and cyan. The same thing, I'm trying to get the complementary to the green. Now that's pr uh, that is a pretty drastic change. Normally in color balance, I'm not moving the sliders very much at all. Maybe one or two, three. And the midtones, subtle changes, highlights, I didn't adjust them at all got to be really careful with highlights because even the slightest change can create a pretty dramatic different look and that's it for the color perfection 
Um, just to add one more really important tip as you're working with your colors, it's really important to not get caught up in your numbers and your sliders. The main thing is that your visuals look really good. These numbers aren't going to mean anything from this picture to the next, unless you want to copy the settings for a scene that was taking at the exact same place at the same time. So it's a good idea just to click on your slider, look at your image, and just ignore your slider and move it around. And, and you want to feel it out with your eyes. Click on the next one and just work your way through naturally to give the best look that you can. So that's it. That's how you perfect your colors using selective color and color balance for a really natural look. If you want to create a very stylized look, um, you can check out some of my other tutorials that get into uh, coloring using curves, split toning, and all that fun. And as a last stage refinement, I always do a sharpening pass. And in this particular image, I also wanted to do a noise reduction to give a slightly painterly look to the image. So there's the noise reduction applied. Do a little bit of a close up here. And let's turn the after folder off. So before is what we brought in from Adobe Camera Raw. And the after is all of our color changes in here. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, I would love it if you could give me a like or you can share it with your friends or even better, you can subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date when I do add new videos. And as always, I'd love to hear your feedback. If you have other cool tips that you think uh, the community can benefit from, please add them to the comment section below. And I'm looking for new ideas for new videos. So please pass them along. Thanks for checking out Impossible Color. I'll see you next week.